Hi, Josh. Hi, Toshi. So, thanks for coming Yamaha to attend the final session of Transformer Immersion Silk on PM10. Thank you for having me. How about the immersion of the sounds? It was very favorable, I have to say, that I was extremely impressed with the silk emulation, especially the Transformer, how you're able to capture the response curves. Um, it's identical to that that we have on our uh, Portico 2 line. Great, thank you very much for good words. So today we would like to review the history between us, collaboration of Roberto Nimu Design and Yamaha to have great sounds and technologies for Yamaha digital consoles. Many years ago, we Yamaha team visited Wembley to meet you and to meet Rupert. Yes. Maybe you remember that. Yes, it was many years ago that our collaboration started. Uh, you came and, and we talked initially about uh, emulating our 5033 5-band EQ and our 5043 compressor. Uh, you also had a number of design philosophy conversations with Rupert uh, about the classics from the early 70s as well as what we're doing today at Rupert Neve Designs. Yes, we talked a lot. Firstly, we talked our intention to uh, emulate the 70s EQ, Rupert's classic, so yes. to speak. And uh, we talked the 70s EQ Rupert made has a very special overshoots on frequency magnitude response, and this is very beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's what has become the hallmark of Rupert's designs now. Yeah, and uh, that, that was a requirement from the situation they are having in UK in those days, like uh, 60s and 70s, everything mixtured, so they have to mix in a mixed situation, so yes. to speak. Yeah, what, one of the requests that came to Rupert early on was to be able to take a set of tracks that had already been recorded and lift out just the guitar without adversely affecting any of the other instruments or the vocalist. Um, and it was from this request that Rupert's classic EQ curves kind of came to be. It's those same curves that we use today. So the other results, Rupert's 70s EQ has a very beautiful overshoot there. Yes. Then this is a very big point. You're still you, uh, reporting the design, keep that kind of the characters on the modern age Portico and the Portico 2 range. That's ports. right. Also, do you have an uh, intention to have a uh, feedback compression, I think? Yes, w one of the things from Rupert's classic um, dynamics designs was uh, the ability to do feedback compression. So it's not as quick as the modern feed forward style but it's one of the elements, along with the transformers, that gives it that full, rich sound that Rupert's designs have been known for since that time. Right. Then uh, we emulated these kind of natures of the European portico products into the software. Yes. Then uh, we realized that the software on the CL console first. Mm -hmm. So the, how was the impression of the disk kind of, you know, emulation quality. Yes, we, we were very impressed because there are a lot of complex things happening. I know you spent a lot of time and a lot of processing power went into the transformer emulation. And we had heard some pretty good EQ emulations from, from various people, but we had never heard a, a compressor, especially a compressor with a feedback mm. type emulation that was done that really sounded like the hardware and you were able to accomplish that. And that's that's one of the things that, that really impressed Rupert and I and knew that we want, Yamaha was the right partner for us to work with on these things. Great.